We use water every day and don't give it so much as a second thought. But water is finite, and it requires endless recycling in order to meet the needs of a growing, thirsty population. So today, we're going to take you behind the scenes of a wastewater plant in Howard County, Maryland, and show you how water goes from its source, like this reservoir on the Patuxent River, to your sink and back again. From tanks bubbling over with sludge to street names like Sludge Road and Filter Circle, there's no mistaking where you are. Located on a sprawling 40-acre site, the Howard County Wastewater Treatment Plant is responsible for cleaning and disinfecting over 18 million gallons of wastewater a day. A plant this big and a process this important takes a lot of people to get to churn. However, who's running the ship? Well, Steve Gerwin is running the ship. That's who he is, a bureau chief with the Department of Utilities here in Howard County. And essentially, he's the one that makes sure that everything runs smoothly. So, Steve, you know, there's water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink until you take care of it. Exactly, Mike. The, the objective of the utility here is to supply our, our residents with drinking water so they can consume it, fight fires with it, and do the things that people do with water. And then once they've used that water, to take it back and return it to the environment in a professional, good way. The plant is nothing more than a man-made river, engineered down from thousands of miles to just a few. The entire process is monitored by the computers in this room. And while the plant sits on a local river, its water doesn't come from nature. Wastewater or influent flows down from the county through a series of underground pipes and filters and is then pumped on to its first stop, large concrete vats. Here, simple gravity takes over Waste and other heavy objects naturally settle on the bottom, like you see in these canisters. Water is cleared off the top and pushed on to the next phase, where bacteria is actually added to the water to get rid of the dangers we can't see. We get the right kind of bacteria that will consume the products in the water that we want to remove, and once those bacteria consume those products, they settle to the bottom, and again, the cleaner water decants off the top and the water is yet even cleaner. How clean is determined in the plant's lab? Here, samples from every step in the process are tested to ensure tough state and federal standards are being met. We test it um, vigorously for pH, DO, nutrients, bacteria. So we, it, we do a lot of testing on it before it is actually discharged and it's high quality, close to drinking water quality. Sonia Williams is the plant's lab supervisor. She says the lab is the last line of defense against environmental hazards. If uh, sterilization hasn't taken place appropriately, um, we will have bacteria that gets put out into the receiving waters. Also nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus, when those go back into the receiving waters, can have a lot of issues with um, algae blooms in the bay, things like that. Through the biological processes, we could get down fairly low with pollutants, but because Chesapeake Bay is, un is under an initiative to become even cleaner, We've entered a process called denitrification where we use sand filters with no oxygen and we can actually remove nitrogen down to numbers that are very, very low. So as far as the water that's leaving the plant, how would you compare that to this bottled water that everyone drinks? The water produced by a municipal water supplier is safer and meets higher quality standards than bottled water. Bottled water is regulated by FDA. The standards aren't as high. Tap water is regulated by EPA. It has to meet much higher safety standards. So you, in your opinion, the water that comes out of this plant is just as good or better than bottled water? Better than bottled water. When I go to a restaurant, I want tap water. Finally, chlorine is added to the water as a disinfectant, and the recycled water is ready to be released back into the bay. Even the sludge and waste are recycled, they're dried out, and delivered to local farmers as fertilizer. So in your words, and you've been doing this for quite a while, how important is this process in terms of not only for our individual lives and our drinking water, but just in terms of just keeping us all healthy and making sure that we all have what we need in terms of drinking water? Well, if you step back 100 years ago, the leading cause of death in the United States was waterborne diseases. The industry's come a long way. We realize that drinking water is a potential pathway for disease. Water will not leave a drinking water plant unless it's safe. The plant would turn off before it would put that water into the system. Right. And essentially, the process starts all over again. It does. Water is a big cycle. Well, that's it. That's the process, the water cycle 2.0, if you will. Not quite the water cycle you learned about in grade school, but just as essential. Because it's places like this that allow you to have your water and drink it, too.